so this video is a brief description of Newton's second and third law. So as mentioned in the video of Newton's first law, the tendency of an object to resist any change in its motion, so the tendency to remain at rest or maintain a uniform motion along a straight line is known as inertia. From experiments and everyday experience, it is observed that a certain force produces different accelerations when applied to two different masses, and the acceleration depends on the quantity of matter contained in the object and this quantity is known as the mass of the object. Uh, and so mass is a measure of inertia, and objects with large masses will have less acceleration than those of a lesser mass when subject to the same force. So for example, this is the same force applied to two different masses, and the larger mass will have less acceleration than the uh, less mass, okay? So the more massive an object is, the harder it is to change its state of motion or accelerate it, okay? Because it will have more inertia, which means it has uh, more resistance to changing its state of motion. Uh, so this shows that the acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to its mass. And now suppose that the same object, so the same mass is subject to two different forces, so if F2 is larger than F1, then the acceleration A2 is larger than A1. Um, so this shows that the magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of the applied force, and its direction is in the direction of that force. Uh, so this shows that mass is a quantity that relates the acceleration of an object to the force acting on it. Uh, also, mass is an inherent characteristic of matter, independent of the way of measurement or the surrounding. Uh, and the SI units of mass is the kilogram. Uh, also, it is found experimentally that if two masses, M1 and M2, are combined together, then the result body will behave as a mass of M1 plus M2. And so, mass is a scalar quantity. Uh, so these observations were summarized by Newton in his second law of motion, uh, which states that the acceleration of an object produced by a net external force is directly proportional to the force in a direction parallel to that force and is inversely proportional to the mass. Uh, so the resultant force, uh, which is the net force acting on an object, is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration, okay? And um, this is a vector equation, so we can write it uh, in component form in each of the x, y, and z axis. Um, and the SI units of uh, force is the newton. So from this law, you can see that 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram times 1 meter per second square. Uh, so now let's consider Newton's third law. Uh, so, a force acting on an object is always due to another object or the surrounding environment, right? And Newton's third law showed that uh, if body 1 um, exerts a force F21 on body 2, then body 2 uh, will exert an equal and opposite force on 1, okay? Um, so, F12 is equal to minus F21. Uh, and any of these two forces uh, can be called an action force. Uh, so if one is an action, the other is a reaction. Uh, so Newton's third law is sometimes stated as to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, okay? Uh, and note here that the action and reaction forces always act on different objects, okay? So they can't cancel each other out. Um, and also, this law uh, shows that forces come in pairs and that there is no such thing as a single isolated force. Uh, so, let's take as an example uh, the apple and the earth, okay? Uh, so, as you can see, the gravitational force exerted by the earth on the apple, this one, has an equal and opposite reaction, which is the force that the apple exerts on the earth, uh, FEA. Uh, so these two forces form an action-reaction pair. And because they are acting on different objects, they can't cancel each other out, right? 
Um, and because the mass of the Earth is so large, uh, it will not accelerate towards the apple because the acceleration of the Earth due to this uh, force is approximately zero. Uh, and as another example, consider pushing a wall, then the wall will push back on your hand, right? Uh, and these two forces are also an actual reaction pair. Uh, also another example is a racket hitting a ball. Uh, so these also two forces between the ball and the racket are uh, an actual reaction pair. Uh, so in the next video, I will show some particular forces such as weight, the normal force, tension, friction, and the drag force. And also will show how Newton's second law is applied when solving problems, okay? So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.